Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are on the planet. Hell, happy day. Welcome. And it's Ignite Humanity Live. I'm your host, Lady J.B. Owen, and I'm so delighted to be here because we're talking about igniting humanity and ways to make a massive impact in the world one increment at a time, one big ripple effect that sort of spreads out and makes an impact for those around you and those that you love. Well, it's Wednesday, so it's Inspiration Day, and we're talking about ways to inspire you and feel inspired because when we're inspired, we do things. We do the kinds of things that we love. And you know, recently I was having a conversation with a friend and they were talking about the new me, the new person, the new person I'm becoming. And I was interested in that conversation because is it really the new version of you or is it just a deeper version of you, the more intimate version of you, the real version of you coming out or the best version of you? And whichever one of those words resonate with you, new version, best version, greater version, more authentic version, what it really is saying is there's an opportunity for you to move from where you are right now to where it is you want to go, to who it is you want to become, to how it is you want to live your life. And not of us, not enough of us feel we have permission to do that. And this show is all about that. The guests we bring on the show, we talk about their Ignite moments, those moments that define them where they stepped into that next version of themselves. And ultimately that version became a better version where they decided they wanted to do things that was going to not only impact their lives, but impact the lives of others and influence others in a way that was positive and inspiring and encouraging. And folks, we need more of that than ever to see positive, powerful, encouraging things that help us feel resilient and encouraged and the favorite word of mine, ignited and all about igniting yourselves and igniting those people around you. Well, I hope you're feeling excited today because we have an amazing guest. Let me share a little bit about you with who's on the show. Dr. Greg Persley, also known as Dr. G, is a catalyst for personal growth. He's on a mission to transform the lives of one billion people. He shows individuals how to reach and exceed their goals quickly by harnessing the power of their belief systems. Creator of the Fixture BS Academy and author of a Fix Your BS book, Dr. G has helped motivate people to identify their ideal belief system so they can take simple time to save steps to build the life they want on their terms. We're going to have a great conversation, so let's welcome him to the show. So happy to have you here. Welcome, welcome. I appreciate you having me as well, and I'm um, looking forward to helping, uh, you know, really ignite as many people as possible on this show. <laughs> I love it. And thank you so much for being here. You know, we love to have conversations about ways to inspire each other. You've got an inspiring story. And so why don't you share a little bit with our viewers about you so they can get an understanding of what brings you to the show and how you feel you are igniting humanity. Absolutely. Wow. Um, well, I mean, I can start from the beginning. So when I was 25 years old, my second child uh, was born and um, we were sitting there in the hospital room. I'm holding him and I got my wife and my daughter and my extended family members. When suddenly out of nowhere, the doctor comes in and says, I need everyone to leave except the parents. I need to speak to them. And in that moment, our life changed forever. Uh, we were informed that he was born with dwarfism and um, we, it's a random genetic change where 80% uh, of kids born with dwarfism have no family history. And so we were, un, it was unknown to us that day. So all of a sudden our joy and our excitement turned into, well, what does this mean? And what, what does the future look like? And all these ideas we had about what normal was going to be was thrown out the window. Um, he ended up having a lot of medical complications over the first year. He spent about six months in the hospital. He ended up with a trach and event because he was having issues breathing. And for eight years, my wife and I had to focus on keeping him alive, keeping our family together. So we basically, everything else, all the other things people really work towards in their 20, 20 year olds to 30 year old um, decades, we really had to just focus on those two things. And so our relationship, our career, business, our finances, our health, our faith, everything was tested. And um, it was it was an interesting journey for sure. Uh, I would like to say before we move on, he is doing much, much better. He's 15 now and uh, my daughter's 17 and uh, it's come come around. But there were multiple Ignite moments, which is why I'm so excited to be on this with you. Thank you for sharing so beautifully right out of the gate, because as a parent, and I'm sure every parent who is listening, there was just that 
punch in the stomach moment that you mentioned of how that joy and the elation just was suddenly shifted and not that it was taken away, but it was just shifted into a new, a new trajectory, a new, this was a new for Dr. Greg and your wife, this was a new path that you were going to go down. What I love and appreciate about your story is that you stepped into the hero version of it and not the victim. And many times mm. people become the victim of their own story and they let their circumstances hold us them back. I'm so happy to hear that your son is doing well. And I'm sure you've learned and gleaned many life lessons, many golden nuggets, silver linings from this. Is there some things that you can share with us that you've learned that could maybe help some other parents going through something similar or struggling mm. with something that may be happening with their children? Yeah, one of the habits that I really developed was to ask the question, what's good about this? So you've heard the statement, you know, there's a silver lining in every cloud. Well, really what that is, is creating the habit of asking what's good about this. How, how can I, and I don't mean use this in a negative way, but how can I use this as a fuel for improvement or for, for, for the future? And if I really look at it over the last decade, he has allowed us to um, grow as individuals and also get into things or, or do things that we never would have imagined doing. Um, it also led me to have, you know, the strength and the courage to say, well, if we went through that as parents, you know, these business struggles we're in or the financial struggles we're in, there's a way to work out of them. So there's always something there that you can, if you choose to look at the situation and say, what is a good thing that's coming out of this? Or what can I learn from this? You, you give yourself the opportunity to grow within any of those trials. Mm, so well said. Now, in the bio, I didn't read that you're an author, but you are an author. You've written some books about this situation and others. Can you share a little bit about some of the teachings that you like to put in your books? Yeah. So first, I wrote A New Kind of Normal. Um, it's our understanding or our journey of, of dwarfism. It was uh, really cathartic for me because it really highlighted the first three years of our son's life and all the things that we had to go through and how it affected my daughter. She was two and a half when he was born, um, how it affected my wife, how it affected my mentality. I mean, I made decisions, business decisions as a business owner. I'm a chiropractor by trade, but I had a chiropractic company. Um, and I was making decisions based out of fear and anxiety and concern and worry. And when you make decisions out of that emotional state, they're generally not the right decisions. You're going to say and do uh, things and make decisions that really aren't in the best long-term interest. And so I had to relearn how to um, change my belief about who I was and what things meant and what my life meant. And so the second book came about, which is called Fix Your BS or Fix Your Belief Systems. Um, I really wrote that because I realized that in order for me to be successful, and we talked about ignite moments. Well, I had an ignite moment in 2018 where I was a chiropractor, I had a company, and it was not fulfilling all the things that I desired. And so I asked myself, can I continue doing this the way I'm doing it the rest of my career and be happy and fulfilled? And the answer was absolutely not. And so it was me going, you know, I'm going to take responsibility for myself and my situation instead of being sad about where I was and frustrated about our financial situation or our relationship situation or my career or business or any of those things. It was, okay, what can I do in order to make improvement? And that was that 2018 was that defining moment. So I ended up over the next few years transitioning my chiropractic company into what's called an integrated regenerative medicine company. We're helping hundreds of people now in our area avoid surgery, avoid meds, avoid steroids, and improve their quality of life physically. And then Fix Your BS the Book is how we really help them improve their quality of life mentally and emotionally. And it's based on those five main pillars, career or business, same difference in my book, career or business, relationships with anyone around you, health, faith, and finances. And when I say faith, I don't mean religion. I mean faith or belief. And so I really help people define their vision of what they're looking for in each one of those pillars so they can implement simple steps to develop <clears throat> really the life of their dreams. Sorry. Yeah, little, well said. I mean, yeah. thank you. Because those five pillars really make a difference. So like, and you and I chatted about this in the pre-show. We can't just have one area of our life doing really well and let the other ones fail or falter or ignore them because 
really, if we're going to be the best versions of ourselves, it is moving all quadrants of our life in an, in an, in a way that there's balance, there's cohesiveness, there's alignment. Would you say that with your clients and when you're teaching your philosophy, is it that there's resistance to it? Is it that people are uneducated and they don't know? Is it that there is this BS, this belief system that it's not possible? Do you find that there's one thing that's holding people back? Well, if you had to encapsulate it into one thing, it'd be fear. Um, fear of the unknown. Now, a lot of times I help people with figuring out what the actual vision is they're looking for. Most people have a very vague idea of mm. what they want their future to look like. And it's, mm. or they're living somebody else's idea of what their future should look like. You know, they've listened to their parents or their teachers and saying, well, you should become this, or you should do that. And what they end up doing is living that life, but it's not really fulfilling to them. But then fear comes in of what are, if I take this step or I take this risk, what are, other people are going to think about me, the people that told me I should do this thing and now I'm not doing it. Am I going to disappoint them? And this is what happens in the brain. And you also have the internal mind where it says, you know, am I going to be able to um, complete this task? What if I fail? Uh, what if it doesn't work out? And the way I look at that is I say, look, if you have a vision or something that's welling up from inside of you, I think it's meant to be. I think you're meant to be here to do that. That's your purpose in life. And if it continues to do that, I think you should look at that seriously and figure out and make a, a, a very clear um, idea of what that is, especially if it's in the future. And just imagine it's already occurring. And when you can imagine that it's real mentally and emotionally, the physical reality will eventually come about. Um, but most people suppress that because they're afraid. And uh, I, I just tell them, look, fear is an acronym I love to use is false evidence appearing real. Most of the fear that people have is simply not going to happen. Only one future is going to happen. So all the other potential failures and fears that you have about that, they're not going to happen. And then if you take the original thing that I said of what can I, how can I use this or what's good about this or what am I supposed to learn about this? That means anything that happens in that process, because there's going to be times, there's, there's going to be frustrated times. You're going to have things that are not going to work out like you had thought. And if you say, what am I supposed to learn from this? It doesn't matter if it's deemed positive or negative. You're still learning through both of those processes. And that's how you become a greater person. So over the last five years, since 2018, four or five years, um, I've had the most personal growth because I've really put those in things into play. And when things happen, I'm really not going emotionally, oh my gosh, this is terrible. I'm going, what am I supposed to be learning from this? And how can I use that knowledge for future me to where I become better? And that way there's never a true failure. The only true failure or uh, 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 is quitting. It's the only true failure is, is giving up on your passion. I really, truly believe that. So if you are if you have something inside of you that says, I, I really want to write a book, start a business, create something, do something, there's a reason why that's coming out of you. And I would say, take a hard look at what needs to happen in order for that to occur. So that way you're not looking at your life when you're in what I call the rocking chair test. You're in your rocking chair, mm -hmm. you're 90 years old, and you look back at your life and you go, I wish I would have, I wish I could have you know, now you can get rid of that and you say, you know, I'm going to do that now. And so you can become more fulfilled in doing those things. So well said. You had a lot in there. And, you know, it's funny because I often say that too. I always say my rocking chair moment. I'll say, you know, when I'm sitting and having my rocking chair moment and I look back and say, did I do all the things I wanted to do? Did I show up in the best possible way? Did I, did I make an, an impact in a way that helped and ignited others? And so it is actually a great test to ask yourself in my rocking chair moment, did I do the things I wanted to do? Going back to fear, you know, it is interesting because fear does hold many of us back and we do feel like something might happen, even though it is potentially contrived or it's not proven real, as you said. Is there some tools that you suggest for people to move through the fear? Because I've had a lot of people say to me, well, you know, JB, you do that and you do that. And it's so easy for you to say it's easy, but it's not easy for me. I love giving tools and strategies to our listeners on how they can, you know, find a way to get up from this show and push through some of the fears to have the life that they want. 
I, yeah, I have multiple different things that people can work through in order to help them develop the vision for their future. But the phrase that I like to use, Napoleon uh, Hill talks about it a lot in all of his books, is the definite definiteness of purpose. So you have to learn about yourself and what your dreams really are and what you really want in life to define or discover really what that definiteness of purpose is. And it took me a long time. There were a lot of trial and errors and failures along the way and in, in, in quotations only because I said, this is not the direction I want to go and I'm quitting this in, in order to do this thing. And, and I honestly developed a reputation because I was making decisions out of that fear and anxiety of starting something and not fully completing it. And it was simply because the biggest mistake I ever made was I was in a hurry in my whole life, my whole adult life. I was basing everything off of fear and anxiety. Therefore, I was in a hurry. I was trying to force things to occur instead of really knowing what my definiteness of purpose was and then going with that flow and trusting and having faith. I always talk about a three-step process, a three-step simple process. Number one, really define what the vision is you're looking for. And if you can do it in each of those five pillars, even better. What kind of relationships do you want? What do you want them to feel like? What kind of business or career do you really want? What do you want that emotionally to feel like? What do you want it to look like? How does that look like for your best day? Uh, what about your finances? Where do you want to be with that? Make it really definite. Um, what do you want your uh, health to look like? And then what do you want your faith to look like or your belief to look like? And if you really put all those things on paper, you've created a really good vision, okay? The second thing is you take constant, consistent, and correct action toward that vision every day. It's consistent. It's correct, meaning you can model someone else or someone that's already done what you're trying to do in order to take the most correct actions that you possibly can. Now, step three is the kicker. This is where people yeah. get, get mess up. They mess up on this one. Most people want to have control over the outcome, but you don't have control over anything else other than your emotions and your thoughts and your actions. So you have to eliminate all control of the potential outcome or what I call the expectation of when and how that outcome will occur. So if you want your vision to come true, just take, take constant, consistent, correct action toward that vision and have faith and belief that that vision will eventually come into reality. And that is called being in the flow. And you get rid of that feeling of the need of controlling things, which is what people get so frustrated and angry about. And so that is a really simple three-step process that people can implement. Beautiful, beautiful. And what I liked about it, I mean, control. And it, I literally was sitting here thinking, let go of expectations. And then you said the word let go of expectations because it is true. We as humans put a timeline on when we want something to unfold or we put a measurement on how it's supposed to unfold. And I always love to say the masters are at work. They're far more advanced than we are to know the right time, the right way, you know, with the right people in the right circumstance. And so letting go of control and adding in some curiosity and mm -hmm. some wonderment, like, I wonder when this is going to unfold. I wonder how this is going to unveil itself is really actually what you just said, a beautiful way to be in flow right. and being in flow allows so much more to come to us. Well, and if you put it, if you put parameters around your end result that you're looking for and you say, this is how it's going to happen. This is when it's going to happen. This is when I expect it to happen. You really put up a box. You really trap yourself inside a, a box of four walls and you don't get to see the other potential ways that your the expectation, the vision, the reality that you're trying to create. You don't really get to see other ways that that might uh, be able to occur. So what we want to do is we want to put doors and windows or even tear down the walls <laughs> so you can look out around everything and have the open potential for anything that comes your way that you go, oh, I didn't even think that that was a possibility. And so that's really the idea. But unfortunately, our society will tell us that you have to rise and grind and you have to get up and you have to force it and you have to pound it into existence. And you're mm -hmm. like, honestly, that's not the way to go. Yes, rising and grinding is a good thing as far as getting things done. But if you take emotion and ego out of your goals, let's just say you have an end result that you're looking for and you know that you're here and you can define that you're here. There's a gap between here and there. 
all you have to do is take the correct actions in order for that to occur. But most people put um, ego and emotion into mm. those actions. They go, well, what are people going to think about me? Or what am I going to think about myself? Or, you know, they have this idea of who they are and well, it doesn't fit the idea of who I am. If you want the end result, you have to become the person that deserves that end result. It's that mm. simple. Mm -hmm. So just take the actions consistently over time and go, when it happens, it happens. And literally surrender to that understanding. It's not surrendering the outcome. It's surrendering to the flow of the end result. And uh, that is so hard for people to do because you have to unlearn the previous stuff in order to relearn this new stuff. Um, and that's, I mean, that's one of the things I love doing. Well, I think we're all really meant to be here to learn it. I mean, no one, I think that's the whole thing about the human yeah. experience is we're, we're here to learn it and unpack it and connect the dots ourselves, not somebody else just telling us it. I, TG Jakes talked about, uh, for, and when it came to finances, are you functioning in a way that you deserve an influx of finances? Are you performing in a way that if you mm. receive finances, would you be of service in the right way? And I, I feel that many of us, in relationships, the same as what you said, in our work, are we performing in a way that all of that abundance, if it were to arrive, are we doing it in a way that we are serving others? Much of what you're doing is igniting humanity. I really want to say that. And sharing with people that they can create a better belief system is really the way to start. There's this ripple effect. How would you like people to leave this interview knowing some new things and taking a new nugget with them? What would you like for them to just really um, understand from your philosophy what's possible for them? Wow. To, to bring all that into just a couple statements is, is really, really hard. <laughs> but, um, look, I... I I'm a chiropractic physician. I have an integrated medical company and that's all about the physical body of how you can improve the function of your physical body, the joints, the muscles in order to improve the quality of, of, of your life. Um, on the mental side, the fixture BS and belief system side, what you believe is uh, reality is going to be your reality. What you believe you're, you're capable of is going to be the limit. Um, John Maxwell talks about the, the lid the leadership lid, but there's lids and your lid is basically what you believe. So on the physical side, we actually see people that get better when they believe what we're doing for them is going to help. Um, and they get better on a remarkable rate compared to the people that are really skeptical. I don't know if this is going to work and whatever. And so putting those two things together, the physical side and the mental side go together. And it's been proven over and over and over. There's books written about it. But what I would like to say, I guess, is I heard this one time and I really loved it. It said, look, if you really want to overcome that mental fear that you have inside, there's two things you really need to do. Number one is you need to read because somewhere in some time in history, somebody had the same issue that you're dealing with and they've written down how they overcame it. And if you open yourself up in order to get that information, it may be something that aligns with you. It may not, but at least you get a different perspective. Your perspective is not always the right or the only perspective. There's more than one that can be right. And then number two, we talk about running. Now you can walk fast, you can run, but the idea of running, because anybody who's ever done physical exercise has come into a position where they're running or doing physical exercise and the voice in their head says, you know, that you're, you're good. You can quit. This is enough. And what you have to understand is that is not your voice. You can tell that thing to shut up and go, you know what? I didn't complete what I'm here to complete yet. And that's where definiteness of purpose comes in. So read and find people in that have been there and done that and whatever, and then also run or put yourself out there physically, mentally, and emotionally, and really pay attention and understand that you're in control of your own thoughts and emotions. And if you can get good at that, you will become an extraordinary individual as opposed to most people, what they do is they settle and say, well, this is good enough. If you're not living your purpose, it's not good enough. So find, believe that you can achieve those things, start taking action, find your vision and get rid of the um, expectation of when and how it's going to occur. And man, your future looks bright. 
Bravo. I mean, you encapsulated that beautifully. <laughs> it was a big question and you gave a massively beautiful, big, fabulous, fantastic answer. Well, so, 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 so inspiring. Well, we're going to pop up your link so people can find a little bit more about where to find Dr. G and know more about what he's up to, his books, his practices, and all the things that he is igniting humanity with and the way that he's making an impact in the world. Thanks so much for being on the show. So enlightening. And I know that you have inspired somebody today. Blessings to you, Dr. G. Thanks so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And I hope I impacted some people's lives and ignited them to get off the couch or do something better and greater tomorrow. You did. You did. You did. You were amazing. Take care and have a beautiful day. I love it when we have guests that are so passionate about their vision and really want to pour into others. Can you see how Dr. G is igniting his life, doing something for him, and that has allowed him to now pour into you and inspire you? Now, every single person watching, you watching, you have the ability to do that. You can take what you've learned and the lessons in your life. Dr. G had some tough things happening with his son, and he's been able to move through them, grow from them, and empower others with information that they can use to empower their lives. You can do the same. So find out, think about it, and think about your life in a way that you can do something that would ignite the lives of someone else. All right, well, if you'd like to watch this episode or any of our episodes, please check out our website. We have a fantastic platform that has recordings of all of the Ignite Humanity live shows, and you have access to them completely free. You can also see us on Facebook Live and Ignite TV and also on our YouTube channel. And then go to Traverse TV, and all of our episodes are also there. Now, we are building schools in third world countries. I have just returned from Indonesia, and that's why it looks so dark on the screen. I'm checking myself out. I'm like, oh, kind of funny, but it's because I was in the sun outside building our schools. It was an incredible experience. Uh, so many children are now going to be in a classroom learning with teachers. And it was so enriching for us to be there and do that. And I just want to share with you, we are using recycle blocks uh, pulled from plastic out of the landfills uh, and building schools. And we would love for you to be a part of that project. Use the link below to donate. Every single dollar you donate buys a brick, and that is going to help us ignite literacy in the lives of others. If you want to know what we're up to at Ignite, well, check out Ignite Humanity Live, our website, and you can see what we're up to with our book, our docu-series, and our movie as we're talking about ways to ignite humanity around the globe. If you'd like to be a part of this program and you'd like to share your Ignite moment in this fabulous compilation book that we're doing, we are looking for authors. And so tell us your story and share how you're igniting humanity and your story could be included in the book. Now, if you'd like to be on the show, well, we do have a type form that you can fill out and let us know what you're up to. Click on the link below and we can check out how you are igniting humanity and maybe you too could be on the show. Well, wherever you are in the world, let me share this with you. You have the power to make a difference. Every single person, all eight and a half billion of us, we have the ability to send out a message to the people in our lives through our actions and our behaviors, through our belief systems and our attitude that we want to live a better life. We want the world to be a better place. And so I want today for you to think about the message and the way that you show up, how you act, what do you stand for? What do you do? And what do people see when they see you? How can you be acting in a way that inspires them to live the best lives by you living your best life? Well, blessings to you. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day and go out and ignite your life. Now, more than ever, we need to come together to connect with one another. We need to feel the truth in who we are and let go of everything that's happened in the past. We need to empower every person on the planet and awaken hearts, enliven souls, come together, laugh, play, rejoice, connect, create, and love. It's time to ignite humanity. We want you to be a part of something that will impact the future for everyone. We want you to tell your story, share your ignite moment, show people who you truly are, be a part of igniting humanity and making a difference in the world and all of our futures.